Hey, welcome to Drumroll. Today I've got with me an Australian flute player who studied at The Hague and launched her career performing a live radio broadcast of Vivaldi's Flute Concerto in Rome. Great way to get started. She's now based in the UK, regularly working with Archangelo, La Nuova Musica, and the Dunedin Consort and the English Concert. And she's been a featured soloist at Aeon Provence Opera Festival and at Opera Comique in Paris. Newly arrived in Australia and freed from the bonds of quarantine, I'd like to welcome Georgia Brown. Thanks, Annabelle. Lovely to be here. I'm so pleased you're here as well. Welcome back to Australia, just in time for the warmer weather. <laughs> It'll be a bit different Thank from you. the UK. Yeah. How long has it been since you were back here? Well, ironically, the very last concert I did in front of a live audience was in March this year with Arco, who I'll be performing with in a couple of weeks. The irony of the full circle is quite hilarious. And this is your first one back again? First one back in front of real people. I've done a couple of um, video live streaming concerts, um, which are just not quite the same. Um, so yeah, it, there's been a little bit of activity, but not not a lot during COVID, I have to say. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, the, the scene around Europe, because I know you work all, all around different parts of Europe. How are the musicians coping over there with the sudden change of all their work disappearing? Oh, it's been a very strange time. And I have to say it's, it's brought all kinds of issues to the forefront. Um, just today outside Parliament in London, musicians <laughs> gathered <laughs> to... Um, protest and say could you please listen to us and make some allowance for all the artists who've had all their work taken away from from them so they gathered an orchestra and they played host mars this very ominous doom like march from the planets and made their statement because there's the, the funding that was there has been taken away and it's happening here in australia too yes it's terrible i know that here one of the early things they did in Australia, the government were very proud of the fact that they had managed to find all the airline workers jobs packing boxes at the supermarket. Joyful. And they're, well, they're saying the same now. Retrain. It's time to retrain. Well, most of us spent the majority of our lives, more than 20, 30 years, attaining the level of skill Excellent. that we're, we're doing now. And now we're being asked to <laughs> go and get a real job. It's such a kick in the face and it's not the way forward we need to find ways to bring our music to people and just be more creative in finding better platforms or safer platforms um, I know in France they were doing quite a few outdoor concerts in the summer a lot of the festivals didn't go ahead but more smaller scale independent festivals popped up we'll call them um, I know in Bordeaux they used this beautiful square so the buildings all around so the sound was pretty okay and then they had every second seat empty and managed to pack a f quite a few people <laughs> in. Um, <laughs> One thing I've noticed with the with the closing of the theatres that a lot more people are realising how much they miss live music and maybe that will um, as a collective start showing people the value the true value of art that if you think hey you know here's Friday night you know, what's on at the theatres, let's go. And they don't really stop to think about how valuable that is. It's very important in lifting people's vibe, keeping the hope alive, uh, being able to express emotions you can't normally express during the day and your work when you're being professional and cold, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm only giving you a couple of different examples there, but so many reasons for getting connected to the arts that I think people are starting to realise now. I really do hope so, because I feel like the shared human experience of people being together in a room, witnessing emo emotions and being taken away to another world is something you can't replace. There's nothing like it. And what was it that people turned to during this crisis? It was art, sport <laughs> uh, and culture. People were crazy for stimulus. So it's part of who we are it's not just a pretty embellishment on the side of society it really is part of who we are it's where we explore deeper things we get a lot of great tv right now it's a lot of great cinema being made but it's always that one step away from being in a room sharing that with many other people it's it is irreplaceable i feel 
Yes, yes. Well, at least we've got these digital concerts, which have been helpful. Now, you've released an album, haven't you? With a, it was an Icelandic chamber ensemble called Nordic Effect. Tell us a little bit about that album. Uh, again, ironically, at, on the cusp of the global financial crisis. Uh, I remember <laughs> you really think your timing, don't you? <laughs> You you remember these events, yeah, they stick with you. Um, we were recording in this amazing cathedral in the Icelandic countryside. It's actually the, the seat of the bishopric of the whole country. And it's on a hill with these amazing mountains and landscapes around. And we would record in the evenings and the sun wasn't going down until three in the morning. So we'd start from 8pm when all the tourists had left. And we'd just go through into the night recording music for flute and strings by a German composer, Carl Friedrich Abel, who moved to London and made his career in London. Wow, that sounds great. So Abel, he's going to be featured in this new concert for the Australian Romantic and Classical Orchestra. I was sent a brief, why don't we do a concert of Abel and Mozart? Um, <laughs> knowing that, oh, how that brilliant! I, uh, Georgia, yes, she's made a, a CD of Abel and brought his music, his flute music, certainly to the spotlight. And then we thought we could combine him with Mozart because they were 30 years apart in age, but they were living, working in London, uh, in Europe at the same time. They even met in London. Abel grew up in the Bach household. Oh my goodness! Leipzig. Yeah, he was basically raised by Johann Sebastian Bach. That his his dad and Johann Sebastian were really good mates and. And when Abel's father died, he was sent to live in the Bach household, which is it's not nothing to have that kind of musical pedigree. Um, My goodness, so mentoring. <laughs> you might say, only the best. Um, and of course, there are loads of other children there. So they're all the sons of Bach who became composers. They all be, were friends. And then when, Bach, um, when Abel moved to London, he... He, li- he moved in with uh, Johann Christian Bach, one of the younger sons, mm-hmm. and together they set up a concert series in what is now Soho. Um, it's the first subscription series where people paid up front for a, a series of concerts over the season, and they'd invite all these soloists who'd be visiting. Everyone would do these tours around the major cities in those days. So they'd have this steady revolving door of amazing performers and composers. And then Mozart would have been introduced at one of those concerts. That almost sounds like the beginning of what Music Hall might have been. You just, as you're talking about that, it makes me think about how when you got to the 1800s, so later on, you had artists that would come and go such a a big popular scene of theatres with revolving doors, like you're saying, new artists coming in all the time. That's That's it. So, so why do we not know Arbel's music as much as Bach's? Um, he didn't publish quite as much as those around him. He was best known as an improviser. So he would just oh. get on his, his viola de gamba was his main instrument. And he could just Go make up way. things on the way. Uh, uh, yeah, off, off the cuff. That's why I, when I found his music and realised not much of it had been recorded, I thought, what a shame, this is good stuff. At that time, in fact, musical patronage was on their way out, so people weren't booked in at one place and hired by an emperor or a prince, and that was your your job, or a church, let's say. Um, People became freelance, and as such, you don't have that backing of the the king's uh, signature on your first page of your... Paycheck, yeah, that came through. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. you have those endorsements, and then you have to make it on your own, and it's a bit like how we operate today. Mm. So this connection between Abel and Mozart, that's quite neat that you've got it in this program. Tell us a little about it because it's coming up very soon. What's the music that we can expect in this concert? So we've got two quartets for flute with strings, one string quartet and one flute concerto. And we can do that with minimal forces because concertos at that time didn't need a 60 person orchestra as a backing band. Um, I can have just two violins, one viola, a cello and a bass. We've even got a chord instrument. We've got a guy coming to play the oboe. So there's one of those by Mozart, which was written around the same time as the Abel flute quartet. And it's just interesting to see the work of two composers who lived around the same time, composing in a similar style. But we still feel with Abel's music, we can feel his past. We know he's come very much from the Baroque and Mozart is a child of the Enlightenment.
Sounds great. So, well, let's have a look at the show. So, it's going to be Mozart and Abel on Friday, the 23rd of October at 7 p.m. This is Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Times. Uh, if you are in America or Europe, you will probably find that is either in the morning of Friday or it might be Thursday night. Uh, but if you have a look on the drumroll.tv calendar and put in your time zone, it will convert to your time so you know exactly when it's going to be. Tickets are going to be Australian $24, which is very economical. And here is the link. I'll put that in as well so that you can buy your tickets, get them nice and early. Not because the seats are going to run out, but because when you're working with digital concerts, you may need to uh, make sure you've got everything set up and ready to go well before the concert so you don't have any technical glitches. So it sounds like it's going to be a really lovely program. And we're looking forward to hearing you as well, Georgia. So thank you so much for joining us today. That's my pleasure. Thank you.